What's up everybody, Jeremy Weiss here with Weiss Tech Hockey and welcome to the You Asked For It section in Hockey Development Magazine. Hockey Development Magazine, in case you're wondering, is our digital publication that, uh, that we put out on iOS and Android devices each month. And um, if you're watching this on YouTube or somewhere other than in the magazine, um, just feel free to visit us at uh, WeissTechHockey.com and then there will be a tab called Hockey Development Magazine or HD Mag up at the top and you can click it, download it for your device and um, you know basically what we do is we make this an interactive magazine so every month you can submit questions or comments or things that you would like to see covered and then in the you asked for it section we cover a few of these each month so uh, this month we had a, a comment come in unfortunately the coach who left the comment uh, didn't leave his or her name so I'm not sure uh, who it is but basically it's it's a I think it's a great topic so I wanted to cover it anyways um, and here's what he or she said love the mag my son just started ice hockey one year ago and uh, he's age 10 and is playing defense. My other son also started a year ago, age 12, and is playing all over, forward, center, D. Uh, being a team manager and learning the game as well, there are two areas I don't see a lot of work on in practices and haven't found much good commentary. So here are the two areas that he, would like, he, or, he or she would like to see covered. Positioning for defensemen on breakaways, and I'm assuming by breakaways that's that means like one-on-ones. Um, because if it's a breakaway, then there's nobody behind the, the forward who's about to shoot. So I'm going to talk about positioning for defensemen on one-on-ones and then back checking for forwards. Uh, it would be great to see some more descript, uh, descriptions slash commentary slash drills on these areas. So um, what I want to do in this video <clears throat> is go through and show you how I teach positioning for one-on-ones for defensemen and back checking and then from there we've had I probably won't have time to get into a bunch of different drills and stuff like that but um, by looking at the commentary you'll be able to apply these techniques in the one-on-one -on -one drills in the break or the uh, back checking drills that you're already using in your own practice so let's go ahead we'll take a look at the rink here pull it up and uh, what I want to do I'm using hockey share today um, so in case you're wondering if it looks a little bit different that's why hockey share is a, a fantastic um, web-based drill diagrammer so you can check that out if you'd like and um, here is here's kinda of what we've got so let's start with the one-on-ones so let's just assume we've got a forward um, this would be somebody from the other team so let's make him in blue uh, in fact let's make him in green so you can really distinguish uh, a lot better we'll give him the puck and of course we want the puck to be black okay now we'll put out our defenseman now here's here's the strategy and we talk about tight gap versus loose gap and uh, I wanted to start by defining what is tight gap and what is loose gap. Um, tight gap to me means that uh, basically you want to be two stick lengths apart by the time you're crossing your own blue line. So as a defenseman, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to control your skating, um, time your skating to keep up with the uh, opposing forward skating so that as you're crossing the blue line, you're two stick lengths away from that player. Now I'm going to talk, that it's not I'm going to actually get into a little bit more detail on exactly what that means, but for now, that's kind of the general definition. So basically, I'm going to put some put some sticks down, and what we want, basically, what this means is by the time I'm crossing the blue line, uh, I can touch my stick with the opponent's stick. And let's just move everything here. Okay, so assuming that this guy has a stick. And assuming that our defenseman has a stick. And some of the uh, some of the ratios might be a little bit off here as far as uh, you know what this is looking like, but you'll definitely be able to get the idea. Okay, so we want to be in a position where as we're crossing the blue line, we're close enough to make a poke check. Okay, so that's what we're trying to do um, in a one-on-one -on -one situation. That's that's where our best bet is going to be. Now, here's what I want to make clear: is that we're not talking two stick lengths away. Um, we're not talking two sticks of the way, like in terms of absolute positioning. We're talking in terms of of north and south positioning. So when we're talking up and down the ice, we want to be two stick lengths away. So here's this might be a little bit complicated, but I promise you by the end it'll make sense. So let me go ahead. I'm gonna see if I can select multiple players at the same time. No, that's not gonna work for me. Okay, I'll just do this real quick. So let's say we've got the same situation. <clears throat> 
except that now the defense or the uh, the forward is a little bit wider. This to me is two stick lengths away still because it's two stick lengths north and south. Doesn't matter about east and west for me. Okay. Now, why does that make why does that make such a big difference? Why is that worth mentioning? Well, let's talk about that. Okay. So as soon as it looks like there's going to be a one-on-one -on -one situation, let's pull this all back out. What we want to do as defensemen is we want to control the lane to the net. So if you think about a standard one-on-one, -on -one, the forward's gonna take the puck, he's gonna drive wide, he's gonna try to get to the net, he's gonna have to cut back to the net. <clears throat> In fact, let me get rid of some of these sticks just so it's a little bit easier to see what we're looking at. Okay, so in that case, what we want to do, again, controlled skating, but we wanna take a direct lane straight back to the net. Okay, so this is what it's gonna look like. Our defenseman, Control the skating, but go straight back to his near post. His or her, obviously. I sometimes say his, but obviously I always mean his or her. So what he's doing is timing it. <coughs> Excuse me. He's timing it so that he's crossing the blue line, two blue line, two stick lengths away, no matter where this forward is. But he's on his way back to the net. Now, what what is this going to do for us? This is going to make it so that. If this forward is going to get through the defenseman to the net, so let's say that the forward goes, uh, let's say he goes wide, okay? So we'll take and uh, give him a give him a wide kind of a wide angle, okay? So let's say he's going this way, right? So he's got to get wide around that defenseman. That's great. Well, now <clears throat> even if he gets where he's distanced himself a little bit from that defenseman, as long as the defenseman maintains the proper positioning, this forward is still going to have to come to him if he wants to get a shot on net. He's gonna to have to come to him, get through him, and then hopefully get a shot on net. If we maintain our lane, now this lane may be, this might be a little too straight. We might, we might not always take that exact same, <clears throat> same angle, but the concept still holds true, right? So we're still gonna stay relatively close, but our main objective is to cut off the lane to the net, okay? And if you do this properly, you're going to outweigh that player, make it so that he has to make the first move. And if you do it right, you're going to make it so that he has to come to you. That's what's going to make it uh, effective for you to play that one-on-one -on -one properly. So it's it's almost like a negotiation. If you think about, uh, you know, a lot of times one of the first things you learn in business school is how to negotiate, how to negotiate a deal. And what do they always tell you? The first person who names a number is the one who loses the negotiation, right? And so it's the same concept. We wanna outweigh this forward. We wanna wait for him to make the move. All we wanna do is maintain our positioning, coming back and cutting off the lane to the net. If we maintain that positioning properly and maintain our gap control properly, then there will come a time where he has to come into us. And then when that happens, <clears throat> Now it goes from being positional to being tactical. And by tactical, I mean you know how to play a one-on-one -on -one properly, which is one hand on the stick, stick goes between the other player's legs, shoulder to chest, and now you play the body, maintain the body, not looking at the puck, not swiping, you just let him come to you. It's really easy to play it that way, and uh, you can maintain control uh, very easily of the play. So that's how you play one-on-one. -on -one. Now let's say this forward, let's say he doesn't do the exact uh, textbook what we're describing here. Most of the time if you play it right, you will. You'll force him wide, cut off his lane to the net, etc. Um, but let's say he gets a little bit more bold and tries to go straight at you. Well, what do we do then? The same tactics still apply. It's just a question of, uh, you know, what direction are you going? So let's say the forward tries to cut inside. <clears throat> In fact, let's draw it out here so we can uh, have a little bit of visual to look at. So let's say this forward tries to cut inside. Okay, it's gonna be the same exact play. All the defense is gonna do is just adjust his angle, his or her angle, and then now we're, we're still coming back to the net, um, but obviously if this player comes inside or comes wide, we're gonna let him come to us, still maintaining that proper gap, which is two stick lengths away, two stick lengths north and south, right? Um, and then make that player have to come to you before um, you know before he or she is able to take that shot. Now, um, if they cut inside, then there there may be an opportunity to play the exact same way, but keeping the forward to the outside on the opposite side of the ice. Hopefully, you'll have some back checkers and and other support coming back. So the one on one usually will be you know one attempt, and then the play will be you know you'll have support after the one attempt. So as long as you play that first attempt properly play the body, don't get sucked into looking at the puck, 
then uh, you'll be in good shape in terms of controlling the attack at the, <clears throat> at the net. All right, so let's flip over now, kind of change gears and talk about the back check. Um, the principles of the back check actually are very similar to the principles of the one-on-one, -on -one, except that this is a full-blown, more of a team scenario in this case. So on the back check, what we want to do is, again, we want to control the lanes back to the net. So let's just say, I'm not going to draw the other team in this, um, we're just going to draw our own team, but let's just say we've had some pressure in the offensive zone, things have gone well, we've maybe got a shot or two on net, but then there's a turnover, the other team starts breaking the puck out. Okay. Our very first thing we want to do is get back and control the front of the net. We want to control the front of the net and we want to control the lanes to the net, if that makes sense. So here's how we do. We go back, I call it five card. We go straight back into five card formation. So basically what that means is the two defensemen are going to retreat back to their respective posts. Now depending on how quickly this uh, turnover and breakout is happening for the other team, you may be skating forward or you may be skating backwards. You know, if it's a three on two coming out of the zone and you're still in okay position, you're gonna be skating backwards. If they've somehow slipped a man past you and they're on their way out of the zone, then you're turning, pivoting, and skating forward back as hard as you can to the near post. <clears throat> Again, same thing over here. Uh, the other defenseman, straight back to his or her, his or her respective post. And we'll put a little arrow on the end. I love having the arrows just so we can maintain control of what we're, what we're thinking about here. Uh, and then the forwards, same thing. So the first forward back is gonna come back to the high post. I call it the high post because it's right in line with the post, but it's higher up in the slot. Okay, so we're coming back to the high post. Next forward back, depending on who it is, <clears throat> some of this may change depending on how, you know, what your formation is at the time of the turnover. But again, we're gonna come back. So we're coming with two guys back to the high post. And then, let me get that arrow stuck on there properly. There we go. And then the last forward is coming back to the uh, to the middle. So we call it five card. And the reason why we call it five card is because if you look at like a playing card, um, you know, five of diamonds, for example, that's the formation that it shows up on the playing card. So the very first thing we're doing is uh, protecting the front of the net. We're protecting the lanes back to the net. So again, if the player is going to get around you and cut to the net, they've got to go through you in order to make that happen. Um, and then at the same time, this is the biggest thing. The, the biggest thing that's important is you're going to have your head on a swivel as you're making this retreat back to the front of your own net. So for example, if this forward's coming back and there's a player somewhere in the neutral zone, <clears throat> uh, you know, sometimes you know, m sometimes you might do this, but most likely what you're going to do is latch onto them. So don't just skate past the player on your way back to the five card. Um, if you catch up to a player on the way out, you're gonna help nullify that threat by latching onto him. And then you keep control of that player all the way back to the front of the net until the initial threat is over. And, um, and then from there, now you're in a good position to break into your defense's own coverage. So let's just say we, we controlled the initial threat, puck went off into the corner. Let's just throw a puck down there. <clears throat> now from here, we can send our close defenseman out to, you know, go and either play force or contain on the, on whoever's got the puck in the corner. We can send our centerman, this guy who's used to become the centerman, right? Uh, centerman will drop down to the near post, kind of in that support position for the defenseman. I always like to say, and this is getting into a little bit of positioning stuff, but I think it applies here. So we usually say our centerman's our third defenseman. Uh, and then from here, our strong side winger can sneak out and anticipate a possible pass out to the point, right? So use that position somewhere near the top of the circle, <clears throat> just so that uh, you know he has a good eye of the puck, a good good vision of the puck, and can anticipate a pass back to the point. And also, once that happens, he's in good um, good position to be in front of the shot, blocking the shooting lane. And then we've got our, our uh, third forward who can sag down into the middle, head on a swivel again, picking up any loose guys in front. So the weak side winger and the weak side defenseman, they're somewhat interchangeable where basically it doesn't really matter as long as they're picking people up in front. And um, if we play it this way, then we'll, we'll nullify the threat, we'll go straight in order, into our D zone coverage like we're supposed to, and um, you know hopefully minimize the, the threat against us 
on a turnover that happens from the offensive zone and a quick break coming out of the zone. So those are my that, that's kind of my two philosophies on how I teach the one on one and the back check. And I've had a lot of good success with it. You know, really what it comes down to the the X's and O's are not that difficult. Um, what it comes down to is being able to read and react, having the discipline to execute it properly. Um, understanding gap control for the defenseman and the one-on-ones and um, you know like I said you can apply these techniques <clears throat> teach your players what it looks like um, take video of them in games so that uh, you know later on you can play it back and say hey you know the problem with this one was your gap control that's why the guy was able to get around you or the problem with you know with this one-on-one is that you lunged for it you went to the forward instead of letting the forward come to you and that's why he was able to beat you so again it's uh, understanding the X's and O's understanding how to play it tactically and then having the discipline to execute it and if you do those three things you'll be in great shape um, it'll be really hard for the other team to score on you and you'll have some, uh, you know, some good success hopefully down the road with this. So that's it. Again, thank you for your questions. Keep them coming in. This is a, I think this is a really fun segment that we do in Hockey Development Magazine. And again, if you're not watching this on Hockey Development Magazine and you're interested in Hockey Development Magazine, you can either search it out on the uh, on the iTunes Store, uh, the the App Store, or um, you know Google Play. <clears throat> like I said, we're on iOS and Android. And um, or you can just go to WeissTechHockey.com and then click the uh, the HD Mag tab tab at the top of the web page. And uh, that's it. So um, again, keep the questions coming in and we'll see you again next month.